Thanks for joining me today. We're going to create a card that I didn't have the right stamp for, and we're going to fix that problem plus make an absolutely adorable card that will be perfect for my beautiful grandson's birthday. You can use this technique when you have a unique need for an image that you don't have a stamp for. I am Jen and you are along with me on my Gentastic journey through early semi-retirement and all the fun hobbies and adventures that that entails. Now let's get creating. My first grandchild is an adorable little boy that has absolutely lit up my life with fun, laughter, and a lot of hugs and messy kisses. He is slightly obsessed with claw machines. Those machines in arcades or the entrance of grocery stores or retail stores that have those claws that grab the elusive prize. So I wanted to create a card for him with a claw machine but I don't have a claw machine stamp, and we will remedy that. I'm going to use a white card base, A7 size, and then fold it in half that makes a five inch by seven inch card. Then I will use this great cobalt blue colored cardstock that I will dry emboss with a fun background embossing envelope that will highlight the claw machine well. I certainly don't have a stamp for the claw machine, and many of you may run into that issue as you have a specific image in mind. So I went online and found a drawing of a claw machine and I printed it in black and white onto some plain copy paper. I will use this fun star embossing folder for the background cardstock. Now I was going to use a square die to cut the blue paper to the shape I wanted as I was going to put the sentiment at the bottom in a bigger white space, but I changed my mind. If you're using a large square die or a circle die to cut out your background paper, you'll want to first do that before you dry emboss it, as the embossing can get a little smashed when using the die cut after the embossing. So that's just a little tip. Since I only want a small white border, I make some small pencil marks and I use my guillotine paper cutter and cut the blue paper to leave a little white card base border uniformly around it, about a quarter of an inch. I'm not a huge measure as I think card crafting allows for slight imperfections. I am a perfectionist by nature and crafting is the one thing that I prefer to be less perfectionistic about. But feel free to measure more exact than I do. I don't sell my work either, so my cards go to people that I know mostly, so I think I can get away with not always measuring. Now that the blue cardstock is the size that I want, I will use the embossing folder and dry emboss it off screen with my Off Nova die cutting and embossing machine that I got off of Amazon. I'll link it below. I think that will look really nice. I then choose the claw machine print that I prefer. I went with the smaller size as I want to leave room for the sentiment and the balloons that I intend to add. I fussy cut it out with my favorite fussy cutting scissors from Tim Holtz. I'll link everything that I use in the description for you. I then pull out some of my colored pencils and I add just a touch of color to the image. I'm going to add some gem embellishments later, so I don't want the colored pencil to be too much. Just a touch of color to enhance the image a bit, adding some shading to this otherwise kind of gray and white image. I sped this up as you get the picture. Now I pick out some colorful gem embellishments that will act like balls or trinkets that are the prizes laying in wait for the claw to grab. I thought I'd be able to use the larger size gems, but they were too big, so I used my tweezer tool and placed the primary colored medium sized gems to the claw machine. I put some smaller ones in the back just to give it more dimension. I like the colors and the sparkle that it gives to the plain image. I need to add some stability to the back of the printer paper that I printed the claw machine image on. I'll use a scrap piece of paper and use some double-sided tape to adhere it to the scrap paper. I'll fussy cut it out again with the same Tim Holtz scissors. And this will allow for a lot more stability as I intend to pop it off the card a bit with some foam tape. Because this has two layers, I like to add a little gray marker to the sides so that you can't tell it has two layers, especially when it's popped up with the double-sided tape. Next, I will add a saying to the inside of the card. Since this is for a three-year-old, it will just need to be a basic saying. I keep my sayings stamps organized by event, like birthday or holidays, in these clear containers, and then I label them. I fussed around with choosing one that I liked, and then I ended up choosing some balloons that I want to add as well, plus just a small happy birthday saying that had some fun accents on it. 
I'm going to use this fun shimmer accent paper. I chose one sheet for each balloon, so four in all, all in primary colors. My grandson loves bright, fun things. He's always commenting on my nails when I add a shimmer or a fun color, so I know he will like the shimmer of these balloons. I decide to stamp my saying for the inside of the card now, as if I do it at the end and I screw it up, which I've been known to do, then now I have all the card front stuff already adhered. That's why I take care of this part now. I add the stamp to a clear block. The clear blocks that I use have a grid, so that allows me to line it up easily. Then I use my favorite stamp pads by Stamp It Up. I'll link below my Stampin' Up! Reps site. Anita is just awesome. Since I'm using primary colors on this card, I either want the blue or the red. Here I choose the blue. It's called Blueberry Bushel Blue instead of the real red color. I always do a test stamp on a scrap piece of paper. I didn't like the quality of the stamped test image, so I sometimes will use a Versamark stamp pad to kind of cure the stamp. I heard that a while back, and I can't remember where or who I heard it from or I'd give that person credit, but it works. The stamp image is much clearer now. Try that technique and let me know if, in the comments if that helps you. Okay, I stamped my image. It came out very nice and clear. Now I can work on the front of the card again. I'm lining things up to decide where to place the balloons and the sentiment so that I don't overcrowd or run out of space. I want to die cut out a happy birthday sentiment. I keep my die sentiments in these clear envelopes and I use ma magnetic pieces in the back of the envelopes to make sure that they don't move around too much in those clear envelopes. I can't really determine where I want the sentiment right now. Where would you have placed it? I take out my We Are Precision Press stamp positioner so that I can stamp my balloons. I could have used another large clear block, but I always prefer to stamp my larger stamps with the stamp positioner. I was going to use a new piece of cardstock, but at the last second I checked my scrap stash and lo and behold, I had a piece of white scrap cardstock. Why does that always feel like such a huge win? Anyway, I'll press the stamp to the top of the stamp positioner and I'm using my VersaFine black ink pad. This stamp pad just gives such a clear, crisp image. I have a pink standard grip adhesive pad that I put on my stamp positioner. As I got really frustrated with using those magnets, I have a metal standing desk and the magnets were constantly flying off to attach to one of the metal parts of my standing desk. So this grip adhesive pad works great and has a nice grid as well. I put the clear top back on the grip pad as I don't want dust or dog hair to get on the grip pad. I have five dogs and dog hair is a big part of my life. I'm going to use that shimmery paper for the balloons, so I will stamp the image on those as well. I should have used a stamp pad that didn't stay as wet as the VersaFine stamp pad does, but I thought I would put it aside long enough to allow it to wait and dry. But if I had used a Stazon ink pad, that would have not smudged and it wouldn't need the drying time. But I used what was in front of me and thought about this later on. So a tip for you. Stays on ink pads will dry quickly and permanently and they are resistant to smudging and resistant to water. But with stays on you have to get a stays on cleaner for it so you can get the ink off your stamps. So anyway, I sped this part up but I stamped the balloons on each piece of shimmery paper. I could have used some masking tape to only stamp the one balloon I wanted off of each piece of paper, but that seemed like too much work, so I just stamped the entire bunch of balloons on each small piece. I will need to wait and let these dry since I used it Versamark ink pad. While I wait, I will fussy cut out the balloons on the heavy white cardstock. I will die cut out the sentiment while we wait as well. This is a two-step die, so there's a background that I cut out in white with another piece of scrap heavy cardstock, and then the actual sentiment will be in the same blue as the star emboss car stock that I used earlier. I use removable tape to keep the dies exactly where I want them as I usually run them back and forth in my die cutting machine. I use my tweezer tool to push out the die cut. There are tiny holes in most dies that allow you to push on those tiny holes to push out the die cut from the die. I could have used some double-sided Sizzix sheets that I have here but I tend to use those for more intricate dies. I will also use my favorite glue, Barely Art Precision Craft Glue, to adhere the blue pieces to the white background. This glue has a nice nozzle for thin applications. I will say it dries very fast, so it's not a glue that you want to use if you like to reposition things. It's pretty much stuck once you lay that piece on whatever you're gluing it to. I almost forgot to die cut out the eye, so I glue that on with my tweezer tool and a dot of glue right here. 
Okay, back to the balloons. I thought the ink would be dry enough by now, but it really wasn't. But you don't see the little bit of smudge as the paper is pretty slick and it came right off. This was a blessing in disguise, actually, as the black ink didn't show around the balloon shimmer paper. I fussy cut out the balloons that I wanted out of each shimmer paper, and then I laid them out on the balloon bunch. I sped this up as I'm a slow fussy cutter. Then when done, I glue each of the shimmer pieces to the balloon bunch. I used glue as the shimmer paper was thin, but it was also slick like it had some plastic type ingredient in it, so I thought the glue wouldn't show through, and it didn't. I attached the blue embossed cardstock to the white card base. Now I will lay it out one final time to come to a decision about where to put my sentiment. I will now use some double-sided foam tape to adhere the claw machine image to the card base. I use a lot of foam tape as I never like the image to get squished. If it doesn't pop up uniformly, I get really unhappy. I use my pick tool to keep the glue off my nails as that tends to happen to me when I use my fingernails to pull off the backing. I'm also going to pop up the sentiment, at the, as this is a birthday card that will go with a gift, so the weight and dimension on the card won't cause an issue, as I'm not sending it through the mail. And then there I go using my nails to pull off the tape, so I'll be pulling glue off my nails for the rest of the day. <laughs> okay, final decision, where is that sentiment going? Will it be straight or cocked to one side? Straight and to the right and a little above the claw machine is where it'll go. Now I need to pull in some balloon string. I have a silvery shimmery one that will coordinate well with the balloons. With the balloons I decide again to put some marker around the edges since I have two pieces glued together and since they will be popped up I don't want to see the difference between the white and the shimmer pieces on the sides of the balloons. Then I attach the string pieces to the back of the balloons. I'm trying to put the longest strings to the balloons that will be the highest up then I adhere them with some tape, and then the double-sided foam tape will double secure them. I'm attaching the balloons to the card base, and I will put the strings behind the claw machine. I didn't push down the claw machine too hard to the card earlier, just so that I could pull it up again to adhere the balloon strings behind it now. Okay, the claw machine card is almost complete, but I decided to add a few stickers to the inside of the card, just to give it a little sparkle on the inside too. What do you think? Please let me know in the comments below. Now I just want to add a little stamping to the A-sized envelope that I'm using. Do any of you stamp your envelopes or add some paper or other techniques to your envelopes to make them coordinate with the card? Let me know. I'm stamping the balloons to the front side of the envelope in the Blueberry Bushel ink pad from Stampin' Up. Then I will use my colored pencils to give them a little color. I thought that markers might be too much with an already bright red envelope, and I liked the muted colors of the colored pencils and how they stayed on top of the envelope versus soaking in had it been the markers. Thanks again for creating this project with me. I think my grandson will love his claw machine card almost as much as I enjoyed making it for him. If you found this card crafting session inspiring or helpful, please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel as I create a new card video every week. Please let me know if there's a technique that you would like to see in one of my future videos.